Hello, it's Joe, and I have a really cool 3D printing project for you that you can do in Blender. And I'm going to show you a neat technique for modeling things in real life in Blender. Here's what you do. Uh, you have to take a thing and take a picture of it with a reference object that has uh, a measuring, th a ruler will work fine. And, uh, and then all you do is you come into your properties panel with N and you open that image in Blender and uh, you know from certain views it'll be there. Uh, let me just turn up the opacity on this one and crank the size up a little bit. There's the picture that I use. See, I'm measuring my glasses because when I went to uh, Gen Con, I lost my glasses. I used to have clip-on sunglasses. I lost them. Um, and so I went to the store to buy new ones and because of the little nubs on the end of my glasses here, um, I, the, the cheap ones, the cheap, cheap clip-on sunglasses don't work. I don't want to pay 60 bucks for another one. I thought, you know, just 3D print it. Will it work? I don't know. But, you know, if it doesn't work, I'm not out much. So, take a picture, import it into Blender, and there you go. I tried to get a new screencast thing so that when I hit keys and click buttons, you'd see it in the corner uh, down there. But it didn't work. Um... It just, open broadcast didn't record. So if anybody has a, a technique, you'll just have to listen to my voice when I say press N and things like that. Or, you know, alternatively, you could get 3D printing blueprints because this is covered in chapter 10, I think. Yes, indeed. This technique, not for this particular project, but this technique is covered in chapter 10 of 3D printing blueprints. So if you don't already have a copy, you should get one. All right. Um, so back to the project. Here's what you do. You import it, and you've got these little... Now, notice in Blender the grid in the background. It's obvious from the top, from the front, from the side views. Um, and this picture keeps showing up on all of them. You know, I'm only going to have this picture show up in the front view. So, front view only. There we go. So, if I'm in the side or whatever, we don't see the picture. And then, notice the grid behind in Blender. Now, that grid doesn't relate to anything in real life but when you export your STL each one of these little grid points is one millimeter and if you zoom in on the grid you'll get an even smaller for nanometers and if you zoom out on the grid you'll see it blocked out for centimeters and if you zoom out even far you'll only get the centimeters now so what do you think is next of course we line up the picture to the grid so these are centimeters, so I gotta go way bigger. Way bigger. Bigger! And. That looks about right. This middle one's off by a little bit, but then so is this one. Now, if I slide them to the left a little bit, that's, that's to the north and south. Uh, well, that one works, but that one not so much, so. Bigger! Let's see. That one's good. That one's not so good. Smaller! Sorry, guys. This is where videos get less thrilling, is where you're watching me go bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. That is not good. Just. You know, really, the trick is like check the middle and check that end. Grief. I just can't get this right. What I should have done is planned ahead and figured out what the scale factor was ahead of time. That's the way they would have done it on a cooking show. Alright, hey, future Joe? No, it's too late. It's 113. Wow, 113 even. Well, there you go. Now, these glasses, if I model them now, will be exported in real life uh, the right size, uh, hopefully. So now, let's model to them. Uh, first thing I want to do is maybe now I want to move this thing up and down. Get that. Actually, they were centered before, so let's just, yeah, let's just rock it. Okay, let's get to modeling. So the technique I'm going to use for modeling this, and let's, oh, well, oh, stupid Joe, that's 113. I wanted to turn down the opacity. There we go. Um, and actually, now I want to slide it a little bit. Now that I know the size, I want to slide the bridge of the nose and line it up as close as I can because I am going to use the mirror modifier here. So here's the technique I'm going to use for modeling this. Uh, I'm going to start with a cylinder. I'm going to scale that cylinder. Oh, there it is. Rotate it by 90. 
Uh, you know what? I don't want that cylinder. I want a cylinder that is easier to control. So I only want eight points on my cylinder. From the top, there's my cylinder. Uh, I want to scale it up in all but the Z, so I hit Shift Z so it still remains thin. And I want to rotate it 90 degrees, and there we go. Then I enter edit mode. I'm going to apply a subsurface modifier to it right now. Subdivision surface. You know, I work with my, my screen uh, scaled up. Now, I've just gotten used to working with it that way, but it means that uh, I have to kind of get used to things falling off the screen. You can use a much higher resolution monitor. I give you permission. All right, I've just deleted the top and bottom faces of my cylinder so that it's just this little ring. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with that later. But for now, we're going to select all these points and move them over. Notice that moving the points while in edit mode keeps the center point of this in the same place. That way, when I add a mirror modifier, it mirrors it around that X. Ooh, look at that, John Lennon. Okay, here we go. Now my goal is to make it so that... Uh, these points. Oh, I'm not in Z. Okay, there we go. Uh, these points. And I'm kind of looking at it. You can't see it as well, but there's a subdivision surface. Oh, have I got that on? No, I don't. Then why does it look like I'm moving? Oh, because I'm moving the faces. Here we go. Vertex editing. That's the way to go. That's the way of the future. I'm looking at the, the smooth, uh, uh, mesh, and so my points are kind of going on the outside of oof, these points, and uh, that's the way. Uh huh. Uh huh. I like it. So when I come out, the sub, the the smoothed one is just perfect around there. And should I be going for the inside or the outside of this? It doesn't really matter. Go for right down the middle. Ish. Yeah, very ish. Okay. So now we have... Well, now there's a little bit of funniness because my head's tilted in the picture. We're going to fudge it on this one. I'm not going to worry about that. So now I've got this. It's a two centimeter wide... Or, yeah, two centimeter thick, which is a good thickness for this. And also I need to have, so what I want to have is I want to have kind of a spring bridging the nose so that I can uh, uh, stretch them a little bit and put them on my glasses and have them hold in place. Got that? So in here, we're going to, oh boy, back to, back to wireframe mode. I want to move these around a little bit because I want this to be the point where my spring comes off. And I'm going to extrude my spring. I'm extruding that straight line there. Uh, extrude. I think actually what I want is my spring to go oh, back to wireframe mode. My spring to go down. Then up. Wireframe mode. Why do I ever leave wireframe mode? Then I extrude that and make a meet in the middle at x equals zero. What you're seeing with the Shift Z is because I sometimes click the wrong button and cause my 3D cursor to move, and Shift Z puts it back where it belongs. Thinks it's got a mind of its own. Well, it don't. You do my mind. All right, I'm going to hit Control R and divide divide that a little bit because I want an extra point right there. Not like the way it's curving like that. You know, I kind of don't care, because in a minute, that's going to go away. Alright. I want that spring a little bit tighter. I am I want it to go down and then up so it doesn't pinch my nose. If it flipped away, it'd be poking at my nose, and that would be annoying. But, that should, uh, if I do the flexi right, be perfect. However, here's what I need to do. I need to take this and separate by my selection... So the spring and the glasses are separate, and now they're not even touching because of the funniness of me. Now they're touching. Are they touching enough? 
Yeah, they're touching enough. I'll move that up a little bit. Alright. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Okay. I think... I think maybe I'm going to make this a little bit wider. And then I'm going to cut it off so I have a flat bottom, so I have a perfectly flat area to print on. If this front is a little bit round, that's fine. Or actually, this is the back. And if it's a little bit round, that's fine. That'll also keep that spring a little bit away from my nose. But I'm going to cut it off right there. Okay, so let's do this. Now let's add some modifiers. Um... First thing we want to add, you know, I actually want to take the subdivision modifier and turn it off for now. We want to add a solidify modifier. Now, if you've never used a solidify modifier, it allows you to take a flat object like, <coughs> like these glasses or a cape or a piece of cloth, determine the thickness of it. Nope. I need to hit Control A and apply the rotation and scale so that this is not being scaled. So I want it two millimeters thick, which is, you know, about the thickness that you want. Uh, maybe three millimeters thick? Maybe two millimeters thick? We can play with it. Uh, offset determines... Uh, a zero offset means that it'll be half the distance on one side and half the distance on another side. Negative means it'll be all one way. Positive one means it'll be all the other way. I kind of want this to be zero. Now there is some funniness with the subdivision, or with the, the uh, solidify modifier, and that sometimes it causes overlaps in your geometry. It doesn't seem to be doing it this time, so good. Now here's, another, here's a really cool uh, thing. You can set the crease, the inner and outer crease of this right here. It's a beautiful thing. I'm gonna set my inner crease to one, and what that means is when I take this subdivision surface modifier and move it, to the bottom and then turn it back on that the inside of this is going to be creased perfectly smooth here let me play with that crease here let me turn it down a little bit do you see how it gets a little bit less round and a little bit more round I love that I mean this this is a beautiful thing in fact I could turn on an outer crease as well and then it becomes just like a cylinder like a like a tube uh, maybe I'll make the outer crease uh, small and then make the inner crease smallish yeah, let's put them both at a 50% crease yeah, let's turn off the crease entirely we can play with this this is called fiddling uh, what do you think I think we need a little bit of a crease on the inside but maybe 80% uh, crease okay we're going to call that good for now now we're going to do the solidify modifier to this bad boy. Are we... Are we modif... Oh, we need a mirror before we smooth. That's better. What happened when I was doing it the other way was that it was being smoothed, then mirrored, which meant the edges were coming out funny. I want to mirror, then smooth, and in fact, I want to mirror, then solidify then smooth. So I want the smoothing to go right at the end. The subdivision surface, if you will. Now, I am not... I need to control A this thing. I am not going to make this thickness 2. I'm going to make this thickness um, 0.8. Why 0.8? Well, because of what I talked about in the YHT video, which if you've forgotten or haven't seen, click my face it will be a link for a couple of seconds to that video where I talk about wall thickness. 0.8 is the wall thickness uh, necessary to, to be happy. To be the minimum thickness for a line to draw and come back. And we want this to be about minimum thick because this is the spring. I'm turning on the crease on the top and the bottom on this one so it's very flat and it stays 0.8 millimeters the whole of its life. think that's good. You know, I'm actually going to play with flipping them around and doing smooth then... Will that work? I think that'll work, but I think I need to take the edge of this spring 
and just move it in just a little bit. I feel a lot better about that. Okay. So smooth them. You know, we can play with these things. All right, next thing we need is something to clip it onto my glasses. And for that, really what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to kind of model my glasses. So, well, we already got something that's the shape of the glasses, so we'll just duplicate that with the Shift D. Uh, we can remove the solidify here, and what we can do is, in fact, uh, we'll go into edit mode. Uh, we'll put that top back on, but we will put a crease on the edge. And we will put the bottom back on. And we will crease that edge. Then, we will measure how thick my glasses are. And, uh, oh, sorry, bad view of my armpit there. Uh, I'm going to use my analog calipers because I left my digital ones downstairs. They are, if I'm reading this correctly, point... Yeah, they're three millimeters thick. Yeah. So we need a three millimeter thick, well, la-di-da, we already got that. And then we'll just move it in the Y direction out here. And we'll give it a little bit of space because these things are going to bend. Notice how glasses uh, arch a little bit. They have a curve to them so that they curve around your face. This does not have a curve, and I'm not going to worry about it because that spring in the middle is going to allow it to flex around my glasses a little bit. So I can do that, as long as I don't place the things that are connecting it, as long as I place them high enough and low enough so that it's not getting in the way of this thing, we should be fine. And you know, if it doesn't, I'll just iterate the design. So those are the glasses, and I'm just gonna set them to wireframe mode so that they're not in the way. That is funky looking, but we're gonna go with it. I'm gonna add a cylinder. But this cylinder is going to have more vertices. 32 of them, and it's going to have a depth of, I don't know what depth it needs to have. I should know this, because I've been playing with it. I think I'm going to give it a radius, though. Needs to be 3, 4, maybe? Well, let's just take it up to 3. That's too much. Let's take it down to 2. So now it's got a diameter of 4, which is uh, fine. That'll work. Uh... Now remember, we're going to be cutting it off there, so uh, I'm going to move it in the Y2, but do it in steps. Is that where I'm going to cut it off? Is that really where's where's that spring? No. There it is, 0.5 over. Okay, got it lined up properly. Now I'm going to go into edit mode, and I'm going to move it over here. Uh, why am I doing this in edit mode? Do you remember? So that I don't move the center point so that the mirror modifier will work because, spoilers, I'm going to do a mirror modifier. Okay, we'll put that thing there. And we'll duplicate this down here. That way it'll clip on and hold on nice and tight. Um, I did not make this long enough. So we'll just make it a little bit longer. I am moving it out three. There we go. Notice how I use the thingy there to do that with? Thingy. Technical term. Now, I kind of don't want... So here's what. Here's the plan. I'm going to take and notch these with my glasses here. So I'm going to do a Boolean difference modifier with the... Oh, I didn't name anything as usual. Well, these are the glasses. This is the sunglass frame, and we got the spring right here, and in a second we're going to have a floor, but we'll deal with that in a minute. So now I can go here, and wait, oh, these, and these are the side clips. Difference out the, oh, not the sunglass frame, the sunglasses. Now here's the problem. Let's go into local mode and take a look at this notch. This is going to be printed laying down, kind of like this. Is that part going to print very well? Think back to the YHT rules. Link on my face if you need it. No, it's not going to print well. We need these to be going up. So, 
we're going to have to change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the glasses, I'm going to take this side out, extrude it up, scale it in. That should make the notch print fine. Now this also means that they're not going to hold on as well, but it should be, you know what, here's what I'm going to do to make it even better. I'm going to, first of all, get out of local mode. I'm going to move these. Why are you doing this to me? Okay. I'm going to move these independently. I'm going to move this in like that. And I'm going to move this in like that. And I'm going to move them both. out like that a little bit and I feel pretty good about that yeah I like that okay we got a spring we got the glasses we got that we only need one more thing in the flat bottom to attach things onto I call that the floor and here's how you make a floor you add a cube you enter edit mode you hit G normally Z because your floor is on the bottom but in this case my floor is on the back and you move everything up by one, you exit edit mode, and then you can scale this whole thing up. And scale it that way, and scale it that way, and scale it that way, and have it be a nice little floor for your thing. I'm going to change that to wireframe mode as well. Could do bounds, I guess, since it's just a cube, but never mind. And... Oh, the other thing I need to do with this floor, though, is I need to move it up here, so GY1. There we go. Yep, that's everything. Okay, let's start doing some booleaning. Which one's going to be my root boolean object? It doesn't really matter. I'm going to take one of them, and I'm going to boolean them with the rest of them. This one's already got a lot of math going on with it. This one's got a lot of math going on with it. That one doesn't in the candidate. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually create a empty object. Um, beep, 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 beep. I forgot where the there it is. Empty. Uh, play and axes. No, sorry, not that one. Wait, maybe it was that one. Where's my empty object? Ay, ay, ay. Okay, Joe. Let's do this again. I momentarily forgot how to do my my thing. Okay, there's my empty. Can I do booleans on this guy? No, I can't. He dies. Let's try this again. Um, come on, circle, circle, circle. You know what? I'll just do it the way I always do it. I'm going to create a cube, go into edit mode, and delete all the points and faces and everything. Now, boolean union with the frame. Boolean union again. You know what? I'm just going to. Oh, that's why I'm going to do this. Union, and then I'm just going to copy the union modifier. Cop, cop, copy. With the spring. <gasps> I forgot to mirror this guy. That's all. You are mirrored. Okay. Uh, where's my empty object? And it is no longer empty. It is now. Nope. Wrong one. This one final object. Boolean it with the clips and then difference it with the floor. Where's my floor? Oh, I call it cube. I didn't rename it floor. Floor. Now, I take that final object, I look at it in local mode, and it's a mess. Hmm. Let's turn off the floor modifier. Okay, clearly that's a problem. You know, really, all the rest of them are good for it, so I'm going to move the floor modifier up to before the spring. Well, that kind of helped. Let's move the clips up to above the... No? That didn't help. Huh. You know, sometimes the Boolean modifier is funny, and I was going to do a video on this, and I still am, but whenever, what happened? What do we do when this happens? Well... You know, what you do is you take the object that doesn't want to play, which right now is the side clips. You take it out. 
you grab the side clips and the final object together. Now when you do your file export STL, you're going to have some intersecting geometry. And that's a problem. Most slicers don't like that intersecting geometry. So what I do is I take it to cloud.netfab.com and run it through cloud.netfab.com and that intersecting geometry is fixed by Netfab. So thank you Netfab for doing that. I don't know why this happens and I could fiddle with it and try and make it not happen. But for now, I'll just give you guys the easy fix. Go to Netfab, fix it up there. And there it is, everything should print fine and flat and perfect. And in fact, it does. I printed it already. Now, full disclosure though, when I printed this, it was too big for my glasses. It didn't hold on, wait, hold on. No, this is the one that did work. This is the one that didn't work. And in fact, I made the sides too long and it was too big for my glasses. So what I had to do was go back in here and move these glasses closer together and adjust the spring. And I came up with this one, which did work. And then I tried to attach uh, some uh, tinted UV protection plastic to it. And uh, it didn't, it didn't. I, I tried to iron it on there with heat it didn't work at all. All it did was warp and deform. So I had to print another one, but that one, I did manage to get it to work. And ta-da! Super cheap. It's kind of falling down a little bit here, so maybe I need to iterate this design and put a bridge across the top of it there. I don't know. Still, still need some work, but I did manage to get it to work. And if you want to know how I attached the cellophane to here, you'll have to go to my blog, link below. And uh, where I will have a write-up for that later on this, or next week, uh, talking about how I managed to get that on there. But it worked! Cheap sunglass, cheap clip-on sunglasses custom-made for my glasses, which are weird shaped and size. Although, really, what I should do is get some glasses that fit my face. Hmm. There's a thought. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. Sorry it ran a little bit long. As usual, you can click down there on Simon to subscribe if you are not already subscribed. And if you are, you are one of the over 200 subscribers that I just crossed the brink of this week. And I love it. Thank you guys. You are the wind beneath my wings. You inspire me to keep doing this. And I am so appreciative of all of you watching. Thank you for liking and sharing and subscribing and telling other people about, you know, liking, sharing and subscribing might be okay, but telling other people, that's the cool thing. That's sharing it with other people is, is really the part that I appreciate and it's you guys are helping me grow. Thank you. If you have suggestions for other videos that you want to see me do, please leave a message in the comments because if you don't, Next week, I'm just going to lecture at you. I'm just going to talk to you about something boring, I'm, I'm telling you. Leave a suggestion in the comments of something you want to see me do in a future video. Another cool project, another cool technique that I can help you guys learn. I hope that I've inspired somebody to make something cool. And I hope that you guys keep making awesome things. Again, thank you for watching.